Hey, how's it going guys? Zedai here. So, I actually wanted to make a review for a little game called Sleeping Dogs. Now, and of course guys, if you guys know it, Sleeping Dogs is actually quite, maybe even say, an underrated game that is actually like a hidden gem. It initially released in 2012 and then it got re-released as a definitive edition in 2014, in October I believe it was. And because of this, I feel that this game deserves a lot of recognition, especially what it is. Because even though the game didn't unfortunately live up to the expectations of Square Enix in terms of the profit, right? And yet there could have been even a possibility of getting a sequel. Nevertheless, what we have here is incredible experience. So, I want to share a little bit, uh, tidbit of my background regarding of this game. So, I actually played this game before, but I was uh, playing it on my PlayStation 3. And I only played it for a story and that's it, I finished it. It was a great experience, I loved it. I didn't think about it too much and at that time I wasn't, you know, making these YouTube videos, so I didn't bother making these sorts of reviews. And of course, with its re-release as a definitive edition on the PlayStation 4, uh, yeah, I didn't play it. I did not play it. The only time I played it, well, it is now, and I have finished it, and also I have got the Platinum Trophy, because I wanted to come back and play an open world element of game, something similar to like Grand Theft Auto style, and Sleeping Dogs is kind of that. And mind you, I remember how good Sleeping Dogs was back then, and now after replaying it, oh, it's just... It's such an nostalgia, it feels so good, and it really is reminiscent of terms of what were those movies called? Like Hong Kong uh, movies that is stars as a Jackie Chan. You know, those action fighting movies, just like a Rush Hour as an example, right? One of the particular movies I absolutely love and adore and I used to watch it all the time when I was much younger. And now actually getting to see this being portrayed here, but obviously minus the, <laughs> the comedy, but still, I absolutely love and adore this game to death. Seriously, it was such a treat. And just revisiting it once again, knowing that the game was good back then, and and actually coming back just to check out again, oh, it's just music to my ears, and just oh, incredible experience, a fantastic story, right? I love how the way they actually portrayed the story here, especially it's actually quite well. It's like Grand Theft Auto based in Hong Kong. This kind of is like that. Now, it is still is a more a scent of Hong Kong style filming that's going on here and the way that they've done this. And I absolutely love that because it's so particular and it's so innovative, at least for a video game, especially back then. My goodness, I'm just like still surprised the way, why in the world do we not have more of these sorts of titles? And yet, it's just that the game, the way it looks as well, you know, in terms of the polish and graphics, Unfortunately, yeah, it didn't exactly age well, but it is still is a looker in terms of its art style, especially since, you know, initially then released on PlayStation 3 back in 2012 and then getting a re-release in 2014. And yet, yeah, it did improve in quality and graphics. But again, guys, I want to mention that for my review, I will not be mentioning everything that does in terms of the definitive edition comparing to the original, because this review is what I think about the whole goal of whole game experience and just you know sharing my thoughts about that so again i know i have read some of the reviews as well that the biggest problem that this game faced and the most negatives <laughs> is actually because it was super expensive for a definitive edition i think it was like full price tag but again i'm playing this game in 2024 so that's not an issue i purchased this game for like five bucks and like getting a definitive edition means that I got every single DLC included. Now, honestly, uh, I did not play the DLCs. I just wanted to get the Platinum Trophy. And by the time I got that Platinum, I was already kind of done with the game because there were some frustrating moments and trophies that kind of got me a little bit... Uh, I kind of kicked to the curve that I'm just like, okay, I'm, I had enough of this. You know, that kind of feeling I got. Nevertheless, I will mention all about the Platinum Trophy near the end of the video as well, guys. And how the experience I went through with. Now, even though it has some incredible uh, story to tell and definitely has got some very interesting things to mention, like it's like closer to cop and criminal double game. I love that. But I was seriously shocked to hear and find out 
who were the voice actors for this game. Wow. So the main main <laughs> protagonist within this game, his name is Will Yan Li. Hopefully I'm not butchering his name. And I was surprised that this was the guy because I've seen him occasionally in movies. And then Tang, well, <laughs> is one of, like there's so many incredible popular voiced actress and actors here like Kelly Hugh or who I believe that's how you pronounce her name as she's like in every other Chinese slash Japanese movies it's incredible and then like James Hong <laughs> my god the dude is 95 years old today and yet he was in this uh, in this game as well it's incredible but again I looked up his uh, you know like his past uh, performances so it kind of makes sense why he could have been in this game as well and then I was also very surprised to hear that Emma Stone was in this game as well she she actually plays a role of a girlfriend and well one of the girlfriends in this game and I'm just like wow and there's way more voice actress and actors within this game I'm just like thinking how in the world did they manage to uh, get them all in and signed up on this game to voice act. Incredible. And you know what? I actually think that's fantastic because the game's story is so fucking great. I loved it. It's just the way they're portraying, the way they're telling the story and how kind of like a cop and criminal, like mentioned, double game sort of scenario goes. It's so interesting. I loved it. Now, it actually has a kind of a beautiful and yet kind of crazy atmosphere within Hong Kong setting. And it really is portraying it super, super well. Now, again, this is still is a little more gamified, if that makes sense. But it, but everything that I've mentioned here is in a positive light. Uh, actually, there's a little bit of a negative part to this I want to mention. Is that I believe this game is actually is a bit of a detriment being an open world. I think it actually would have been better if it would have been a little closer to a linear approach, like um, like Mafia, like Mafia One Definitive Edition, like that. I think that would have been better. Again, I get it. I know, I know. Mafia One Definitive Edition is open, also open world. I get that. What I mean is that I just want them to have less of things to do around the world. Does that explain things? That probably doesn't. But yeah, I think this actually is a bad idea to make this game an open world. But because of the open world elements means that you get to play a lot more of this game and to experience it more and to see more. So you see, I can say that this could be a positive and a negative or maybe a bit of both, like mentioned. I actually like the way that they did with the dialogue. There's a little bit of a mix of English and Cantonese and uh, just hearing it out is quite interesting. Now, again, it's a... Uh, Personally, for me, I'm more familiar with Japanese than Cantonese and Mandarin included. Like, I'm just, you know, it's kind of a new experience for me, nevertheless. Oh, the soundtrack is SGI new on fire. I loved it. Now, there's two parts that go into this. The soundtrack is great, but the music, uh, unfortunately, kind of sucks. Like, there's only one or two songs that are really good, but the rest of the songs, and I'm talking about, like, strictly regarding of the radio in radio station, you know, when you're driving cars. There's a lot of radio in here are present, and I don't listen to none of them, because I, I started listening to them, I don't like this, I don't like this, I don't like this, but again, this is just maybe my preference and my opinion, but nevertheless, it's just that radio that they chose for the music to play while you're driving a vehicle, it's not very good, at least not, not to me. Okay, let's talk about the main element within this game that really does well. I personally think that the combat, especially how it's based, is fantastic. Like, I love the way the face buttons have so many varieties of combos that you can utilize. Like, I'm like this was actually the reasoning why I criticized so much of Black Myth Wukong. It's just that you can only press square 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 and that's it that's what you do you always going to initialize the same patterns of combat but in this game if you do different varieties of square mashing right just square square and hold square you use different styles of combat or like you hold square or you do something there's it's just it's not overly complicated and it's actually kind of easy to get into it and yet it looks fantastic it's responsive it's not obviously a similar like combat style like it was presented in the batman games uh, but this this does it very very well initially i thought okay well, is this a little bit off you know the way that they have this kind of like a time pairing if that makes sense 
but nevertheless I, I continue on playing I noticed okay okay no no it's just perhaps it was just me but then I got used to it and I got very very good at it uh, just including that the fighting the parkour is uh, it's just wow it's so well done I personally believe now unfortunately if when you'll be going for the platinum trophy you've been seeing this quite a lot and it can get kind of repetitive as well because you can clearly see the same animations are been being overused a little too often but again i don't think that's necessarily a bad thing somebody okay so i mentioned a lot of good right actually pretty much all of this is mainly good a few details i mentioned are not very good as well so i do have some the something to criticize and to mention that are not very good as well within this game uh, even though they have featured it here, the karaoke. Well, it's a nice addition, I guess, but again, I think it would have been better without it, perhaps. I don't know, it's nothing special. I just wanted to mention here that it's kind of like it failed to, to do what it was supposed to do, and I don't think it was necessarily that great. Now, uh, there's also inconsistency of the frame rate that I noticed, but it wasn't bad. But at least because, uh, look, I played on my PlayStation 5, and oh, we have to talk about that. Yeah, this game is kind of broken on PlayStation 5. Thankfully, it gives you a little bit of a warning on like notification on the sites and like this is a PlayStation 4 game. You may face some issues playing this on PS5. And yeah, I did notice some issues, especially like my game crashed consistently maybe 8 to 12 times because when I started booting the game up, you know, like I was playing the game for 3 4 hours last night. I wanted to go to sleep. I went to sleep come back and then wake up and I started wanting to play the game again, continue on from the my most recent save file, the game crashes. I put up the game again, the game crashes again. And they did this to me four times in a row. And then I was like, I did nothing different. On my fifth attempt, it went through and I continue on playing the game like normal. And this happens consistently. That's not good. There's something is off about this and I'm not too sure what could have been. Yeah, the game is kind of broken, so you have to be careful. Now, I did hear also, I'm just going to sprinkle it in here, that the trophies within this game are, well, they failed to track properly. I actually did not have that issue. Not even one trophy was like a major problem. Now, talking about the trophies and the way that the progress is being made, well, it's a little bit inconsistent, I want to say. So, if you guys know it, this game has three varieties of leveling system. One is the face XP. The other is the police XP, and a third one is the triad XP. Triad is the biggest problem that I noticed. So I've been wearing specific suits that you can actually increase your XP uh, gaining, right, with ex at the experience. But even if you do that, it is just still not enough for this triad XP. And at the end of the game, that was actually my last trophy that I needed to get 10th level for the triad XP, and I had to replay and thankfully you can replay missions and actually this warned me of getting the uh, well basically the 100 percent completion and getting that platinum trophy yeah there's there's just some kind of ways that they've done this like it's extremely easy to get two progressions but the triad xp the third progression is like oddly difficult not uh, difficult but just takes way longer and it, it's just inconsistent it doesn't make sense if you guys have played the game, you know what I'm talking about. And um, yeah, there's some kind of finicky moments within this game that I'm noticing. Another finicky moment, I have to mention this. This is like the worst thing. This actually now that I think about this, two of the worst parts about this game. Very weird button layout. Especially when you're running, right? You have to hold X to sprint. If you don't, you don't sprint. You just pretty much walk. So there's no jog and you can't really do nothing about it. And because of this, it actually results of you unable to turn the camera. And that's the second part. The camera. The camera is fucking busted in this game. It's in the vehicle, the camera is unusable. It's awful. And even when you're running, the camera is unusable. The only time you can really utilize your camera is when you're simply standing still or you're walking slowly. Then you can turn the camera. It's odd. And it doesn't seem like it was a limitation, so because it was a 2012 game, no. I think it was actually made with the decision of doing it so. And I think that's not a good idea, personally, for me. So I actually had to use a claw grip. If you guys know it, I had to use a claw grip, and while holding X while running, I could use my camera as well. And this was also present on older Grand Theft Auto games, 
like Grand Theft Auto 4 and initially for the Grand Theft Auto 5 but I know that Grand Theft Auto 5 got an update so you can actually change this set, sort of a setting but yeah it's still we gotta move on we gotta stop with the X and uh, just have R2 on everything in terms of the acceleration and thankfully in a car that's not an issue because in a car if you want to accelerate it's R2 so at least they thought about that like because I think it would have been a very big problem if this game would have been driving well, while you're holding an X button or whatnot. Uh, okay, now shooting. Uh, I actually think it's good, but that's just it. It's good. It has a slowdown animation as well. Whenever you uh, bolt over some kind of surface or whatnot, you, and you aim, you slow down, <laughs> go into the time zone, and anyway, you take shots, headshot, headshot. Feels great. Feels like John Wick. And uh, yeah, it, <sighs> There's a lot of things that this game got for, it's just, it's incredible experience and I loved every moment of it. So the trophies in general were a good experience for me, at least. It took me 33 hours to get 100%, well, the platinum trophy for this game. It took a little longer than I anticipated because on PSN profiles it mentions I should take around 30 hours as well, uh, but yeah. <laughs> Yeah, well, thankfully, I actually taken my time and just gone over through the world and collected every single thing because you pretty much need to collect every single thing, all the collectibles, but they're not too bad. And some of the collectibles, you have to use some puzzles, like, for example, lock picking system. It's all here. Like, you have to break through uh, the camera while, you know, putting in a random pin code, a four digit code, and you have to kind of guess and you only have a few chances. It's, it's a nice addition. And then there's also safe cracking and for some odd reason you have to use a phone for that. Okay. <laughs> and there's also uh, opening up the doors, you know, on using a lockpick. I'm actually surprised wait, there were not that many of them. I feel that they should have utilized it a little more often. But initially, there's like in total maybe four or five times you do lockpicking on doors. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, that was pretty much my full review for Sleeping Dogs. I love this game. It's fantastic. It's brilliant. And I am very seriously saddened the way we're never going to get the sequel for this game because the studio has been shut down, I think it was in 2016. And there were some, you know, talks that this should have been getting a, a sequel about Square Enix, unfortunately, has you know, they're not doing it anymore because, well, Sleeping Dogs was a flop in terms of the profit, but even though the game has received fantastic reviews, but unfortunately, you know, money talks, is, that's, all, that's all there is to it. All right, guys, that's, uh, wow, this video has gone long, way too long, than I, <laughs> much longer than I anticipated. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Like and subscribe, see you guys all, and uh, yeah, have a wonderful day.